Hello, peaceful dreamer. And welcome back to the Sleepy Time Chronicle. Your nightly escape into tranquility as the evening stars appear. We embark on a gentle journey to the quarters of sleep. In this realm, stress dissolves under the numerous watchful eye. The night's embrace is a comforting friend. Prepare your cosiest sanctuary, close your eyes to the world, and sink into the velvety arms of the night. Cast aside your day's burdens, for it's time to wander in a land where dreams are crafted from stardust and whispers. Whispers of Sugar and Flower Chapter 1 The Dawn of Sweet Whispers In the heart of a quaint, picturesque town, as the first light of dawn kissed the cobblestone streets, the Sweet Whispers Bakery began to stir with life. Sophie, a young baker with a heart as warm as her oven, was already bustling about in the kitchen. The aroma of freshly baked bread and cinnamon filled the air, weaving a comforting blanket over the still sleeping town. Sophie not rain was been an early riser, finding solace in the quiet hours of the morning. It was a habit she had inherited from her grandmother, the original owner of Sweet Whispers. The beaker was more than just a business to Sophie. It was a legacy, a tangible piece of her beloved grandmother, who had passed away two years prior. As she muttered the dough for her famous sort of bread, Sophie's mind wandered back to her childhood spent playing among the flower sacks and sneaking case of her grandmother's creation. Those were the bays where the bakery felt like a magical kingdom. And on a grandmother, the reigning queen. Sophie learned the art of baking, not just her recipes and techniques, but her stories and laughter. Ingredients just as crucial in her eyes. The wireless of sweet whispers where it gone with wild photographs and handwritten recipes, a testament to the generations of love and care that it gone at every corner of the bakery. Sophie felt a deep connection to these relics, each telling a story of family, tradition, and the simple joys of baking. As she placed the first batch of bread into the oven, Sophie smiled, feeling a warm sense of pride and continuity. Sean's night was baking bread. She was keeping the essence of her grandmother alive. One loaf at a time. As the little mini sign climbed higher, casting a golden hue through the bakery's front windows, the first of the beggars began to trickle in. Mr. Jenkins, the town's retired postman, was always the first. He claimed no day started right. Without a slice of Sophie's apple, pie and a strong cup of coffee. His arrival was as punctual as the clock that chimed in the town square, a constant in the pivot, pounding tapestry for the bakery. Next came Mrs. Alvarez, a her young daughter Mia, who by fresh croissants and raspberry tarts, Mia eyes all in we sparkling with delight as Sophie slipped a extra cookie into their bag. This is a year's. By mid-morning, the bakery was a hum of activity. There was Mr. and Mrs. Kweski, who owned the flower shop next door, always debating over which pastry to take for their afternoon tea. Then there was George, who found inspiration in the bakery. It's Cussy Corners. His laptop, put in the midst a scatter of troll. Each customer brought their own flavor to the bakery. Their stories, the laughter blending with the aroma of big goits. Sophie knew them all by name, knew their favorite treats, and often, not what they needed even before they did. For many, Sweet Whispers was more than a bakery. 
he was a part of their daily life. A place where they felt seen and unappreciated. Sofia equated each trust. In these exchanges, she found a deep sense of fulfillment. Knowing that her bakery served as a haven, a place of community and connection. As the money rush slowed, Sophie found a moment of respite. She leaned against the counter, sipping her tea, her gaze drifting over the bakery. It was during these quiet moments that her thoughts often turned to the past, to the story of how sweet whispers had become hers. Sophie's grandmother, Eleanor, had been the heart and soul of the bakery, a master baker renowned for her skill and her creativity. Eleanor had turned sweet whispers into a beloved town landmark. Sophie had grown up in the warmth of the bakery's kitchen watching her grandmother conjure up delightful pastries and black bits seemed to hold a touch of magic. When Sophie turned 18, she began working alongside her grandmother, learning the intricacies of baking in the business. Eleanor, with her kind eyes and gentle hands, was not just teaching Sophie how to bake. She was imparting life lessons, poetry and resilience, and the importance of adding love to every recipe. The end. Two years ago, Eleanor fell ill. It was sudden and heart wrenching. In her final days, she called Sophie to her bedside. With me, but a determined voice, she said, Miss Sophie, my dear, the bakery is yours now. Keep it alive, not just in bread and cakes, but in spirit and heart. Those were her last wishes, and Sophie had taken them to heart. Inheriting sweet whispers wasn't just about running a business. It was about preserving a legacy, the piece of her family's history. Sophie felt the weight of responsibility, but also a profound sense of purpose. She was determined to honor her grandmother's memory, to keep the spirit of sweet whispers alive. And so, Sophie had stepped into my grandmother's shoes, or rather, her apron. She brought her own flair and ideas, but always maintained the essence of what made the bakery special. It was her tribute to Eleanor, a way to keep her spirit alive within the walls of the bakery. A typical day at Sweet Whispers was a symphony of sights, sounds, and smells. After the morning rush, Sophie would begin preparing for the afternoon. This involved baking the second row of pastries, often experimenting with new recipes or perfecting the classics. The clatter of baking trays, the wear of the mixer, and the occasional chime of the oven timer create a rhythmic backdrop to her work. In the afternoons, the bakery took on a more relaxed act. The morning crowd of her sure customers was replaced by a leisurely trickle of locals. Occasional tourists who had heard about the charming bakery. Some came for a quick snack, while others lingered over their coffee, enjoying the cozy ambience. Sophie read at a point to interact with her customers, often stepping out from behind the counter to chat. She enjoyed hearing about their days, sharing stories, and sometimes offering the sympathetic ear. Her natural warmth and the genuine interest she showed in her patrons made many feel like they were visiting a friend rather than just a bakery. During quieter moments, Sophie would work on administrative tasks but her favorite time was when she could experiment with new ideas. Whether it was turning out a unusual ingredient or tweaking a traditional recipe, these creative sessions were her way of keeping the bakery dynamic and exciting. As the day went down, Sophie would begin cleaning up, wiping down counters, and packaging any unsold pastries for local shelters. She believed in giving back to the community that supported her and her grandmother for so many years. 
ere the time the evening arrived. And then the nose spying hung down on the door. Sweet whispers would be filled with the satisfying sense of a day well spent. For Sophie, each day was not just about baking and selling. It was about creating experiences, fostering a sense of community, and continuing a beloved family tradition. As evening approached, and the golden sunlight softened, casting long shadows across the bakery, Sophie took a moment to sit at one of the empty tables. It was a time she cherished, a moment for reflection amidst the hustle of the day. Her thoughts invariably drifted to her grandmother, Eleanor, and the profound impact she had on Sophie's life. Sophie remembered the countless hours they spent together in the bakery. Her grandmother's hands, skillfully shaping dough as she imparted wisdom. Eleanor had a saying for every occasion. Little nuggets of knowledge that Sophie now realized were about much more than baking. The right amount of pressure turns down to bread. Just as the right amount of challenges turn us into who we're meant to be. She would say, these moments of reflection were not just about nostalgia. They were a crucial connection to the past. Sophie understood that she was not just running a bakery. She was continuing a story, one that began long and before she was born. Her grandmother's legacy was not just in the recipes she left behind, but in the values and traditions that had become the essence of sweet whispers. Sophie felt a deep. She may have said sweet whispers to remain a place where people felt welcomed, where they could find comfort not only in the food, but in the atmosphere and the sense of community. As she sat there, Surrounded by the warmth of the airfield and the lingering sense of the day's baking, Sophie felt the comforting sense of continuity. She was part of something bigger, a legacy that transcended the mere selling of bread and pastries. It was about creating a space where people could come together, share stories, and make memories. This was the true essence of Sweet Whispers, a legacy she was determined to uphold. The day was drawing to a close, and the soft glow of the bakery's interior light to cast a warm, inviting aura. Sophie was tidying up, her thoughts still lingering on her grandmother, when the sound of the doorbell jumped up unexpectedly. She looked up, surprised to see a customer at this hour, just as she was about to close. The visitor was a woman, Elegant in dressed, her features partially obscured by the brim of a wide hat. Something about her seemed both familiar and enigmatic. She walked in with a grace that seemed to fill the room, her eyes scanning the bakery with a curious intensity. Good evening. Sophie greeted, her tone a mix of warmth and curiosity. I was just about to close. But I'm happy to serve you if you'd like something quickly. The woman smiled, her gaze settling on Sophie. I'm not here for the pastries, she said in a voice that was soft yet clear. I'm here for you, Sophie. Sophie felt a flicker of surprise. Don't I know? She asked, trying to place the woman's face. You men, you do. The woman replied her eyes glinting with a hint of mystery. And you a grandmother, Eleanor. She was a dear friend of mine. I've been a maid for many years, and I only just heard about her passing. Sophie's heart skipped a beat. This woman had known her grandmother, a connection to a past that she held so dear. Then let us have a seat. Sophie gestured to a table. Would you like some tea? It's the least I can do for a friend of my grandmother's. As this end, the woman introduced herself as Claire. She spoke of her adventures around the world, her voice carrying tales of distant lands and cultures. But it was when she spoke of Pelliner that her eyes truly shone. Claire recounted stories of their youth, of the dreams they shared 
and Han Yunlin's passion for baking was an inspiration to all who know her, listening to Clara. Sophie felt as though she was uncovering treasures from her grandmother's life, facets she had never known. It was a poignant reminder of how an inner spirit continued to touch lives, even beyond her time. A seat at the bakery, now dimly lit, seemed to be involved in a timeless bubble. Stories filled the space, weaving a tapestry of memories and connections bridging past and present. Finally, as the night deepened, Clara stood to leave. Your grandmother left a beautiful legacy in you, Sophie, she said. Her eyes were flooding a mix of sadness and admiration. Wheat whispers is more than a bakery, or it's a testament to love, resilience, and the beauty of shared stories. With those words, Clara departed, leaving Sophie in a reflective silence. The encounter felt like a gentle nudge from the past, reaffirming her path and the importance of what she was doing. Night night, as Sophie locked up a bakery and knocked home under the starlit sky, she felt an even deeper connection to her grandmother. And it unknown sense of purpose for sweet whispers purse. Chapter 2 Memory cakes begin the next morning. As sweet whispers opened its donors to a new day, Sophie still found herself reflecting on her encounter with Clara. Well did she know that this day would mark the beginning of a new chapter for her bakery. Memorin, the bell with the door jingled, and a vantily man stepped in. He's a familiar face to Sophie, Mr. Harrell, a widower who had lived in the town for as long as any mom could remember. He was known for his quiet demeanor and gentle smile, but today there was a certain pensiveness in his eyes. He ordered his usual a cup of black coffee and a slice of lemon cake. As Sophie served him, she noticed his gayest lingering on a photograph of her grandmother on the wall. You miss her, don't you? Anna was a special woman. Mr. Hare remarked softly. Sophie nodded, a mix of sadness and pride in her voice. Yes, she was. I try to keep her spirit alive in this bakery. Every day. Mr. Harrow smiled, then hesitantly began to share a story. He spoke of his late wife, Lillian and how they used to visit the bakery every Sunday after church. Lillian loved baking and had a particular fondness for a special recipe of chocolate cake that Eleanor used to make. Sadly, after Lillian's passing, Eleanor had removed the cake from the menu, as it reminded her too much of her friend. Sophie listened intently, touched by the depth of Mr. Harm's memories. An idea began to form in her mind, a way to honor both her grandmother and Mr. Harrow's late wife. Mr. Harrow, would you come back tomorrow? I have something special in mind for you. That evening, Sophie rummaged through her grandmother's beamed recipe books. She found the chocolate cake recipe, its edges worn and stained with splatters of chocolate and vanilla. It was more than a recipe. It was a tangible piece of history, a symbol of friendship and love. Sophie decided to recreate the cake, infusing it with the same care and affection that her grandmother would have. As she baked, she thought about Mr. Harold and Lillian, about her grandmother, and about the countless stories that must have been shared over slices of this very cake. It felt like she was weaving together the threads of past and present, creating something that transcended time and loss. At night, in the quiet of the bakery, with the golden life involved in the her, Sophie realized the power of baking. It wasn't just about creating something to eat. Eking in your memories. 
evoking emotions and connecting people across the boundaries of time. Time. The next day, when Mr. Harrow returned, Sophie presented him with the chocolate cake. A look of surprise and deep emotion on his face spoke volumes. He tasted the cake, and for a moment, his eyes closed, his memory seemed to wash over him. When he opened them, they were glistening with ancient tears. This tastes just like hers, he said, his voice thick with emotion. Thank you, Sophie. This means more to me than I can imagine. As Mr. Harrell left the bakery, clutching a box with another slice of the chocolate cake, Sophie felt a profound sense of fulfillment. She had done more than bake a cake. She had revived a cherished memory, bridged a gap because in the past and the present, and touched the heart. That evening, as Sophie sat, while in the Novelty Bakery, she pondered over the day's events. The idea that had started with Mr. Harrow's visit began to take shape in her mind. She could use her baking to help others relive their cherished memories, to create what she decided to call memory cakes. Each cake would be more than just a dessert. It would be a tribute, a way to remember and celebrate meft rooms and special moments. Sophie felt a surge of excitement at the thought. She was eager to see where this new journey would take her when sweet whispers. Ina so wanted to deepen her connection with her customers and her community. To share in those stories in the most personal way. She know how, through the art of baking, inspired by the emotional impact of the chocolate, take she made from Mr. Harrell. Sophie spent the night pondering the concept of memory cakes. She envisioned cakes that were more than just confection. They would be enlightenment and cherished memories, baked tributes to moments and people long treasured. The next morning, Sophie arrived at Sweet Whispers with a renewed sense of purpose. She began drafting ideas, jotting down notes on how to implement her vision. Which way my cake would be unique? Tailored to the stories and memories of her customers. They would not just be orders, but would be collaborations, well collaborations with her patrons. Filled with personal significance, Sophie decided to introduce the concept to her customers by placing a small, beautifully handwritten sign on the counter. Mal Memory Entry takes custom cakes to celebrate your cherished memories. She also prepared a small booklet outlining the idea and inviting customers to share their stories. The response was immediate and enthusiastic. Customers were intrigued by the concept, and soon orders began to come in. Thus Mrs. Green, who wanted a cake reminiscent of her honeymoon in Paris, and in Tom, who wished to surprise his parents with a cake similar to their wedding cake on their anniversary. With each request, Sophie scheduled a seek to own conversation with the customer. She listened intently, taking notes and asking questions. What flavors did they associate with the memory? Were there specific colors or decorations that were significant? Each detail was crucial. The piece of the puzzle that would help her. Lager recreate not just the cake, but an experience a moment in time. Sophie felt a deep connection with each story shared, realizing that through these cakes, she was learning more about her customers. Laughs than she ever had before. A bakery, already a community hub, began to feel like a tapestry of stories, each thread woven with care and love. The memory cakes became a symbol of sweet whispers, commitment to personal touch, and community connection. Sophie realized that she was not just selling big goods. She was part of her customers' lives, their celebrations, and their memories. This realization filled her with a profound sense of gratitude and purpose. 
the creation of each memory, cake was a journey in itself for Sophie. Every cake began with a story, and she immersed herself in these narratives, letting them guide her in the kitchen. Baking these cakes was not just a culinary process. It was an act of translation, turning memories and memories into flavors, colors, and textures. For Mrs. Gunin's partition honeymoon cake, Sophie decided on a delicate lavender and lemon flavor, reminiscent of the French countryside. She spent hours experimenting with the recipe, ensuring that the flavors were balanced and evocative of the romantic street to Paris. The decoration was a careful recreation of the Eiffel Tower and Bicing, surrounded by painted lavender flowers. Tom's cape for his parents. Anna Ursula was a challenge of a different kind. He had a vague description of the wedding cake something with vanilla and strawberries. Sophie decided to fit a modern twist. Creative vanilla, being capier to be the fresh strawberry compote. And a light master plan clum. The decoration was simple, yet elegant, with a cascade of edible flowers and strawberries. With each cake, Sophie found herself pushing the boundaries of her baking skills. She researched, experimented, and sometimes had to start all over again. When things didn't turn out as planned, that the challenge was invigorating. It was a creative process that brought her immense satisfaction, especially when she saw her ideas come to life. The most rewarding part, however, was the customers' reactions when they saw and tasted the cakes. Their expressions, often the mix of surprise, joy, and nostalgia, were what made all the effort worthwhile. Sophie knew she was creating something special, something that went beyond the realms you well of ordinary baking. Beach memory cake became a testament to Sophie's dedication and in her ability to connect with her customers on a deeply personal level. She was not just a baker. She was a keeper of memories. An artist who used her oven and her imagination to bring joy and reminisce to people's lives. Through this process, Sophie felt a renewed connection to her grandmother. She could almost sense Eller's presence in the bakery, guiding her hands, aim, sharing in the joy of these creations. It was a confident thought, one that made her feel that she was on the right path, continuing the legacy her grandmother had left behind. The true magic of the memory cakes revealed itself in the emotional reactions they evoked. Each cake, once unavailed, became a portal to the past, rekindling emotions and memories for those who had to measure them. Mimi says Green's reaction her Parisian honeymoon cake was profoundly touching. When Sophie presented the cake, Mrs. Green's eyes lit up with a mixture of surprise and nostalgia. As she took the first bite, her expression softened, and she was momentarily transported back to those blissful days in Paris. Tears welled in her eyes as she shared memories of her young love, strolling through the lavender fields and the quaint streets of Paris. The cake was not just a dessert. It was a reawakening of cherished moments. Similarly, the anniversary cake for Tom's parents bad about a heartwarming scene. When they saw the cake, their faces heat up with joy and astonishment. It's just like our wedding cake, but even more beautiful. <laughs> Tom's mother exclaimed. They shared stories of their wedding day with Sophie, reminiscing about the young love they had, and how it had grown over the years. Tasting the cake, we were visibly moved, reliving the sweet memories of their special day. Each of these reactions, right? 
He enforced the impact of Sophie's memory cakes. There were more than just confections. They were tangible expressions of people's most treasured moments. Sophie found herself deeply moved by the role. She played in reviving these memories. It was an emotional journey not just for her customers, but for her as well. Through these cakes, Sophie connected with her customers in a way she never had before. She was privy to their joys, their sorrows, their reminiscences. That was a profound experience that transcended the typical biker wisdom relationship. She felt honored and humbled by the trust they placed in her to recreate such significant pieces of their lives. The memory cakes became a medium through which Sophie could offer comfort, joy, and a sense of connection. It reminded her of the power of food in bringing people together, and in evoking memories and emotions. This experience enriched Sophie's understanding of her role as a baker. She was not just nourishing bodies, no, she was nourishing souls. Word of the memory cakes began to spread beyond the regular patrons of sweet whispers. Sophie found herself receiving inquiries from people across town or even from neighboring areas. The concept had struck a chord with many, resonating with their desire to reconnect with their past and celebrate their memories in a unique and tangible way. Local newspapers caught wind of the story, and soon, an article about Sweet Whispers and its memory cakes appeared. It detailed how Sophie's innovative idea was bringing a new level of personalization and an emotional connection to the art of baking. The article included testimonials from customers who had experienced the magic of the memory cakes sharing how these creations had touched their hearts and brought back beautiful memories. This publicity brought a new wave of customers to Sweet Whispers, each with their own stories and memories to share. And as a couple celebrated in their 50s, Henny Mona de Cake reminiscent of the honeymoon in my way. Oumu wanted to celebrate her mother's Maitreve birthday with a cake that burnt 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 Sophia was busier than ever, but it was a fulfilling busy. She felt a deep sense of purpose and connection with each memory cake she baked. The story she heard would divorce some joyous, some poignant, but all deeply pertinent and significant to those who shared them. Each cake became a new challenge, a new opportunity to push her creative boundaries. Sophie experimented, mix, flavors, and designs, continually honing her craft. The bakery itself transformed into a galley of sorts, showcasing photos of her memory cakes alongside the stories that inspired them. The community's response was overwhelmingly positive. People appreciated the thoughtfulness and care that went into each cake. They saw Sophie not just as a talented baker, but as someone who played a special role in their celebrations and remembrances. Sweet whispers had always been a cherished part of the community, but now, it had taken on an even more significant role. Sophie's and the cakes were more than a product. They were a service to the heart, a testament to the power of sharing and preserving memories. They had become a part of the town's narrative, a center of its shared history and connections. As Sophie sat in the quiet of the bakery after a long day, she reflected on the journey of the memory cakes what had started as a simple act of kindness for Mr. Harrowood blossomed into a significant and meaningful tradition for Sweet Whispers. The impact of these cakes on her customers and on herself was profound and deeply moving. Sophie felt a sense of pride and fulfillment that went beyond her personal success. The memory cakes had allowed her to touch people's lives in a very personal way. 
she was honored to be entrusted with the task of translating cherished memories into something as tangible and delightful as a cake. It was a responsibility. She took to heart, understanding that each Kate was a tribute to someone's life, love, while her legacy, the process of creating these. Cakes had also been a journey of self-discovery for Sophie. She had dumped Doper into the added baking, pushing her creative limits and discovering new talents within herself. Each cake was a new challenge, an opportunity to grow and learn. More importantly, Sophie felt a deeper connection to her grandmother through this new tradition. She could sense Anna's spirit in every memory cake. She baked, guiding her hands and watching over her. It was as if, through these cakes, Sophie was continuing her grandmother's legacy of land, care, and community. Sophie also realized that the memory cakes had strengthened the bond between Sweet Whispers and the community. The bakery had become more than a place to buy Biden pastries. It was a place where memories were honored, where stories were shared, and where connections were deepened. It was a testament to the idea that food, especially when made with love and thought, could be a powerful medium for connection and expression. In the quiet of the bakery, surrounded by the comforting smell of baking and the soft glow of the oven light, Sophie felt a profound gratitude for the path she had chosen. The memory cakes were more than just a successful addition to her business. It were a reflection of her values, my passion and her love for her community. As she prepared to close the bakery for the night, Sophie felt a deep sense of contentment and anticipation for the future. The memory cakes had opened a new chapter for sweet whispers, one filled with possibilities, stories, who had continued legacy on bringing joy through baking.